Hello again, everybody. It's Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in Premiere Elements, part six of our eight-part series. Keyframing is really the key to getting to some of the deeper features in Premiere Elements. Not just in Premiere Elements, you'll also find it in Premiere Pro. You're going to find it in Final Cut. You're going to find it in pretty much every video editing program, including programs like After Effects. When you add keyframing, to an effect, you can control the effect so that it changes its settings over time. For instance, your video clip can go from color to black and white and back again. Or you can take your video and make it spin through space, create a transition like it's spinning in from the distance to fill your video frame. Or make a crop open up. You can use keyframing on your audio to adjust the levels. So if you've got, for instance, music playing in the background every time the narration comes in, you can use keyframing to lower the volume of the music in the background and then bring it back up again after the narration is over. So keyframing really is an essential feature to understand. To demonstrate the basics of keyframing, we're just gonna do a simple animation, a pan and zoom, a motion path over this photo. So I'm gonna select this photo on my timeline, I go over to the toolbar, and select Applied Effects. That's the FX button with a pencil on it. And since this particular picture has had no effects applied to it, the only effects that are visible here on Applied Effects are Opacity and Motion, the default effects for video. But if you toggle Open Motion, you can see that you can control the scale, in other words, how large this photo is within a video frame, its position, moving it left and right and up and down, and you can even rotate it if you want. So to create our pan and zoom motion path, we're going to open up the keyframe controller for motion. Go up here to the top right, click on the little stopwatch, and here is our keyframe controller timeline. Let's move the playhead to the very beginning of the clip, and we just want to create, say, an opening keyframe. So we can adjust scale. I'm going to adjust scale in this particular case by clicking on the number and just scrubbing or dragging over it. Now I can make adjustments to the position effects either by changing these numbers or I can just grab on and drag right on my monitor. This is going to be my opening keyframe for my motion path. So to start my animation, I go over here to the right of the motion listing and click on this stopwatch. This toggles on animation and creates my initial keyframes. These little diamonds represent the current settings for position, scale, and rotation. Move the playhead out here to the other end of the timeline. And then I'm going to zoom in to say well, 200. And then drag just a little bit to the right here so I'm just seeing these two guys. This is going to be my closing keyframe. And you notice that the program then has created additional keyframes here for position and scale. Now, between these two keyframes, the program creates the animation or the transition from one setting to another. And if I were to click the play button or even press the space bar on my keyboard, you can see the animation. And that's really all there is to keyframing. You create these little diamonds. You, each diamond representing a, a different setting for an effect, and the program then will create the transition between them. Now I can bring these keyframes closer together by just kind of lassoing them and dragging them closer together. Now my animation is going to happen much more quickly when I press space. Farther apart, it happens more slowly. I can delete keyframes. I can copy keyframes. And when I paste them, now I've got the settings frozen between these two sets of keyframes. And that's really the basic principle. You create keyframes to represent various settings, levels, or positions, and the program will create the animation between them. Now, keyframing is really a whole course in itself. There are so many applications for it. In the book, we show you a number of cool keyframing tricks. I've also got a book called Cool Tricks and hot tips for Adobe Premiere Elements. That's a book of special effects you can create with the program. That's well worth checking out. We use keyframing a lot in there. But understanding keyframing is really going to open the door to a whole nother level of effects.